Welcome back again. Today I'm going to give you a review of this stove. It's a MSR XGK EX. I talk about the good thing with it, I talk about the bad thing it, I talk about why I choose it. If you're new to this channel, my name is Matti. I live in Jokmok, north of Arctic Circle in Sweden. I live here together with my girlfriend Stina. We run a small guide company with dog sled tours, canoe tours, packraft tours, hiking tours and so on. We also make these YouTube videos, of course. Today, we're going to look at this stove. This is the stove I use during the winter. It's called MSR XGK EX. I would say that this is the most reliable stove that you can find except wood stoves where you put wood inside or alcohol stove with no technical things that can fail. This is a really, really good one. This stove is not new on the market. This have hanging around for 35 years. So the whole idea with this stove is that you have a pump. This pump you put into the bottle and now you can regulate the pressure by yourself in the bottle. You know, if you have the gas stoves with gas tubes, when the temperature goes down, the pressure lowers in the tube. With this one, the low temperature is no problem. You maintain the pressure in the in the bottle with this pump and it gets preheated here so the liquid turn into gas and then it burns as gas. This stove you can use for gasoline, actually gasoline for car but it's not so healthy. You can use it for diesel, you can use it alcohol, paraffin, a lot of different burning liquids is good with this stove. I prefer to use something we call acrylot gasoline. It's the same gasoline you use for the machine you cut in grass, the four stroke machine you use for cutting grass, you know, this, this. yeah, the same, without uh, the oil in, because the oil in the gasoline you use for two stroke engines, the gasoline without oil is for four stroke engines. You should have the one with four stroke engine, the environmental friendly as possible because you probably use it close to food, you probably use it inside the tent and you don't want this uh, after burning things to get it into your lung. So use as clean gasoline as possible. This MSN This stove, this MSN stove, is what I use during the winter. I use it probably a little bit different than most of you do. I use it on the dog sled tours. And when, when I'm out with 30 dogs with a group, I cook for five person. I bring two stoves, cook for five person, and I need minimum 30 liter hot water for the dog food. So you can imagine how much water I actually heat up with the stove every single night when we're camping. Now I don't camp all the nights, I also go cabin tours and we have a tent camp that we go to and then we don't use it. But it's always hanging around in the sled as a backup stove. So my stoves are shaking around in the sled on the bumper trail. And I have tested other brands and they break down from that. They can't handle the non-stop going fire for hours to heat up snow, melt snow to water. Something goes wrong with them sooner or later. Or they can't handle the shaking in the sled actually. So this stove, I had it for 15 years maybe, and they don't break down. So our stoves have a hard life without any doubt. They really have a hard life. The basic idea with this stove is that you keep the fuel separate in the bottle beside. You use this pump in here. And you connect, you connect this to each other and then you pump up here and you have the regulator here. So you can, how much speed you want. So the basic idea is very simple. You keep the fuel in the bottle, you connect them, you make the pressure in the bottle and you burn, burn uh, the gasoline here. This bottle, as you see this is not MSN, you could have MSN. 
But what you should be really careful when you choose bottle, because this stove come without the bottle. You should pick a bottle that are made for pressure. If you grab a cheap, low budget something bottle, then they can crack when you make pressure in. And you don't want this to crack when it's full of gasoline and you have fire here. That's a catastrophe. Don't be greedy when you buy this bottle. Buy an expensive bottle with quality. And Primus make at least bottles with good quality. And MSN do bottles also. So choose a good one. The stove itself, it's very robust build. I, I use them for heavy pots, up to 10 liter water in the pot. Usually three to 10 liter water in each pot. And with these arms, you can fold them like this when you don't want to, uh, when you want to keep it uh, in the packing. And you also have a hook here that you can hook up so, or hook so when you want to pack it in the bag or in the box transportation. But it's really sturdy build. These arms don't break down for 10 kilo pot on top of it. It's really, really good. The downside with that, it's a little bit more heavy because it's, it's well built, of course. So when this pump, when I get the first one, I looked at it and it's plastic. I think this will break down. It looks like a Lego toy or something like that. But 20 years later, because I have done 20 years, it's still okay. It haven't break down. I, I, I'm very impressed with this actually. And there is nothing in here that start leaking either. The only thing I have uh, changed is this red, uh, in Sweden we call it packning, but I write it, what's the English name? This red I changed on one of four stoves. So they are really, really, really good. I can really recommend this. So the connection between the pump and the stove is like this. You put it here and push, push it in and snap it. You don't have to screw or do something like that. This is idiot safe. It, until now it have not break down, it have not start leaking. And when you take them apart like this, it's not leaking either. So I don't really know how it works because a lot of other stoves you get leaking gasoline and so on when you when you put them apart after using them. So there is three downsides with this stove. One is the weight. This stove is actually 320 gram and this pump is like 60-70 gram. So it's quite a heavy stove because you also have to add the bottle. But the, that downside is not a problem for a dog musher or people who pull pulkas because then 100 gram is not a big deal. So I would say that this is the downside, the weight is only if you're going backpacking and carry things and or if you are ultra lightweight packer that really, really want lightweight equipment, then it's a real downside. The second downside is the noise. And that is a downside because it sounds like a rocket when you start it. It's difficult to sit and talk like this when, when, when you have a group in the tent and so on. So it's really, really noisy. The third downside, that's when you adjust this, when you open it and adjust it, it's on or off. You can't make pancakes actually, because when you open it and start it, it's full speed more or less. Noisy, full speed. And when you turn it off, then it dies directly. So other, the silent stoves, uh, when you start them, you can adjust um, how warm you want it to be. So you can actually fry pancakes on a lot of other stoves, not on this one. But heavy, noisy, on off. But it always start and you don't get problem with leaking gasoline on places where you don't want leaking gasoline. Because that is exactly the problem I get with several other brands of this stove. Now I'm sitting here and editing the video and then I want to add one thing. If you're going to buy this stove, it's good if you buy it from your local shop of course. You should always support your local shops. If you're going to buy it on the internet and you want to buy from Amazon, 
there is a link down here. If you click on the links at our videos and then sh make shopping from Amazon, we get a kickback from Amazon and that helps us to maintain this channel and making these videos of course. And we would be thank you grateful if you do that. But go back to the video. When you get this stove, you also get one of these reflectors that you put that you put around like this. Of course, that's standard. If you get this stove, you should get a service box. Even if it haven't break down for me, I always carry a service box. It's a small one or a big one. And you have in these ones you have um, the equipment you need for repairing and service of the stove. One thing I had to do sometimes is to put grease in the pump, but that you had to do on all of these pump stoves. You put a little bit of grease and then it's fine. And when you have the pump like this and this is hanging around in a dog sled or something, I always try to get a plastic bottle that fit over and then it protect this part during the transportation. This is really good. So this is not a stove for everybody. This is not a stove for the nature photographer that wants to sit in a hide, silent, waiting for the brown bear coming close. It's too noisy. It's also not a stove for the backpacker that wants an ultra lightweight, super light backpack something. Then it's too heavy. This is a stove for a dog musher that don't care about the weight so much. This is a good stove for a guide who need to cook for a whole group. When you need something that you, re you can rely on and you need not to adjust it so much. It's a little bit annoying with the noise, but it's a super stove that never let you down. It's also a good stove if you're going out traveling, because I think that all over the world you will find fuel for this because you can really use it for many many different kind of burning liquid you had to look after because there is a small thing down there when you buy it you see there is usually following two small things one for gasoline and uh, paraffin and one for the other ones so you had to check that and one more thing what we have seen the last weeks is that more and more people subscribe to this channel more and more people start looking at these videos i think it's because of you because you share this video in your facebook groups instagram whatever i don't know and you subscribe and you giving thumbs and you write comments and you know that help us with the algorithm in youtube so more people find our channel and Thank you very much for that help, because we are so happy for that help, actually. That's nothing we can do. The only thing we can do is making videos and put them out there and hope that people find them. I think that's was all from me today. See you in next video. Ciao!